My friends, I didn't get a lot done in the shop over the weekend, but I did make a milestone or two up there at the rental property where the uh, flood happened. I'll tell you all about that right after this. friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Happy New Year. It is Monday, January 2nd, 2023. And it'll only take me four or five months to remember that it's 2023. It won't take long. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure the rest of you will do much better. Yeah, I did get uh, some pretty good progress made up there on the rental property. And uh, I'll show you a little video footage right now. Well, here's what she looks like after a few hours of work. You keep in mind these walls are six inches thick. Uh, these are, you know, two by six walls. And so there's the regular two by six inch batting compressed against the outside wall. I know you're not really supposed to compress it, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. And then I put uh, an inch and a half of uh, styrofoam behind the main plumbing area here. Now, neither of these areas has ever frozen. The other thing I'm going to do is when I put the drywall back, I'm going to leave a vent in this area here and a vent in that area up there so the air can circulate through these pipes. That'll get the warmth of the air uh, from the room around those pipes. And I've also cocked all the joints in that uh, styrofoam so that there's no chance of outside air getting into this chamber. So it really, I think, is super well done. I don't think there's a chance this could freeze again. I say that with reservation. This side was a little different. This is actually where it froze and broke. This little fitting right here is what froze and broke. This bottom of this goes out to the outside faucet. So the outside faucet, the cold traveled in here and froze this and this broke. This is the uh, cold water water line here and this just goes up and connects to that. This is one of those fittings that shuts off right here so it shouldn't freeze. Um, the difference is now I'm not going to put this drywall back. I'm going to let the room air hit this. Now the, there'll be a vanity covering this whole area and we can leave the vanity doors open when it gets really cold. But that should keep this from freezing too. I also put two and a quarter inches of the styrofoam here so it really should be very uh, warm. And then of course it's got the six inch batted insulation above this. So I, I think that's about as well as a person could actually do it. You know, and, I, and then I'm going to put one of those styrofoam cups on the outside over the outside faucet also. That should stop all the problems, I would think. From this point over, the whole outside area is uh, heated. So this whole thing is heated. All the plumbing goes through here, the shower, all that. So this part should never freeze. It took me a little over an hour to put all the drywall in there. I say that it may not have been quite that long. I did a few other things. I've cut out the holes, as you can see, where the vents will go. And that's, I think, the most important part of that. Well, my friends, there's what she looks like after the first coat of mud. So it's put back in place. That's probably the last thing I'm going to show. You can see, though, I do have the vent cut up there, and I have the vent cut down here and that allow airflow on this you know uh, through there and that way those pipes should never freeze again and of course I don't like I said before this side here has never really frozen I don't know what the difference is you know it only freezes over here where it's much more complicated to fix it <laughs> you know it's just that's kind of my typical luck it always you know it froze behind the shower I had to pull the whole shower it froze behind the toilet one time and now it's froze under the sink and the only reason it froze under the sink is because I just didn't have that outside faucet insulated and I still don't but I'm going to insulate it now I can tell you 
Well, hope you enjoyed taking a look at uh, what I did up there at the rental property. Mother Nature found the one tiny flaw in my whole plan up there and exploited it. Stuff happens is all I can say. Hopefully now it's bomb proof. I hope it is. At least it should be. I had to say goodbye to my two grandsons this morning, Trinian and Layton. They're on their way back to Ohio. Grandma Sue is uh, hauling them halfway back and uh, their mother is going to meet them at the halfway point. Uh, that way each of them only have to drive like a full trip to Ohio. <laughs> Wow, it's tough to, when you're that far apart. I'm sure many of you are much further than that. I always uh, hate it when the boys are gone. It, they enjoy it here so much. We had uh, shooting lessons yesterday. We have a little 22 that they, they took turns learning how to uh, plink at a can and uh, we're really enjoying it. In terms of instrument work today, this is basically finished, but I wanted to hold it over, a, you know, over the weekend and a few days to just double check the action. When I checked it after first stringing it up, it looked perfect. I haven't checked it yet today, but uh, it doesn't look like it's changed. I just wanted to be sure it didn't change before I send it back to the customer. So I'll triple check the action today on this, and uh, if it needs adjusting, I will. Otherwise, we'll uh, notify the customer this one is ready for pickup. On this guitar, the one with the broken neck, you saw that I released the broken neck video on the Larravee mandolin yesterday. I released both parts. That's the first time I've ever done that where I've released both parts in the same day. Actually, it's about the first time it's ever been able to do that. <laughs> Emery had both parts finished, so I released uh, part one uh, Sunday morning and I released part two Sunday evening. It's just deja vu all over again. I've got this one temporarily glued back on and I guess I'm just going to try to do the very same thing. The difference being on this one, I don't think I'm going to take the fingerboard off unless I absolutely am forced to do that. I'm going to try really hard to cut this taper in here around the truss rod. And I know you might think, well, that's crazy hard. Well, it is, but it's uh, also crazy hard to take this uh, fretboard off and chip all the finish and all that. So I'd rather do the lesser of the two evils and just make it more work to cut the taper. At least that's what I think I'd rather do right now. I may change my mind as I often do once I get into it. We'll see how that goes. That's about it for today guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.